Good morning, Grace Church. Morning. Oh, that's the reverb on that. Nice. That's why it sounds so good sometimes. Okay. <laughs> if something's not working, you should always look at the power button. Make sure it's on. Hey, Amen. How's everybody doing this morning? You guys loose? Everybody good? All right. Everybody eat all your jelly beans and all that stuff from last week? All right. I still got some. Let's pray. We'll open uh, with a word of uh, prayer and ask God to bless our service. Father, we just come before you, Lord, just thanking you and just thank you for how awesome and how mighty you are, Father. Father, we never take for granted the fact that we're able to wake up and have the breath this morning, Father. We thank you for that, Lord. We are appreciative. So we come here, Lord, lifting your name high, Father, just giving you all the honor and glory, Father, for our day. And as we enter in, Father, we, we release everything that we're worried about, any worries, any cares. Your word says to cast all of our cares onto you, Father. And so we do that this morning. We do that, Lord, so you can just move mightily within our hearts and our minds, Father. We ask for a fresh anointing this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
Lord, we sing how worthy you are and how holy you are this morning. Sing it out. Worthy is a
We need you this morning.
Let's take it out. Remember. Remember love. Remember mercy. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Your loving kindness has never failed me. Christ before me. Christ behind me. Let's take it out.
Sometimes when we take communion, we don't often, often emphasize this, but part of what he did in his finished work, it says in the Bible, especially Isaiah, he was despised and rejected by men. Despised and rejected by men. So guess what? Jesus even took your rejection. If you've been rejected by others, guess what? He took it. You know how you feel when you feel rejected? Like, you know, unloved, unwanted. Well, guess what? He bore that too. He bore that too. He took your rejection, glory to God. Amen? So whether you're being rejected at school or, for, you know, whatever, or, hey, he bore it, man. He bore that too. He was despised and rejected by men so that we could be accepted by the Father. Come on now. He bore the rejection. He took the rejection so we could be accepted. Hallelujah. I want you to say this, Heavenly Father. Thank you for the blood. Thank you that you bore my rejection. You'll never leave me. You'll never forsake me. I'm accepted in the beloved. You bore my rejection, Jesus. You'll never reject me. You love me. Your blood has paid the price. Your blood has made me righteous. Your blood has made me holy. I'm holy because of the blood. Thank you for paying the price, for paying for all my sin, and now I'm accepted in you. In Jesus' name. Go ahead. Partake.
Praise God. You agree with that? Amen. Well, go ahead. Why don't you greet one another in the Lord before you're seated as they continue to sing? Just worship the Lord. Well, God bless everyone, and welcome to Grace Church. If you have any first-time visitors, we just want to say welcome on behalf of the pastors here. And if you're looking for a church, you just found one. Amen. Amen. Well, real quickly, just want to give you some updates on what's taking place here for the week. We have today, of course, at 11 a.m., right after the service, we have G1 for all the youth. So get ready for your class, G1. Young people, do we have a lot of young people here? Let me hear you scream. <laughs> Amen. And then on Wednesday, of course, we have our men's Bible study and our young adults at 7 p.m. here in the youth building. On Thursday, we have always Miss Patty and her group there at her facilities, and that's on um, Thursdays, and then on the 12th, we have, uh, on Friday, G1 Youth. Come on, if you're going to clap, clap. <laughs> and then we have our men's fellowship at 7 p.m. on Friday as well. Now, this is uh, for all the men. Bring your own pizza. Bring your own pizza and be ready to share with someone on that day, okay? We do have uh, a uh, sign up sheet if you are attending and I'm going to put it up in the front so if you're going to come sign your name there and that way uh, Pastor Andrew will know how many people are going to be coming and again bring your pizza and share with someone um, also I just want to let you know before Pastor John comes up here and do, does tithes and offering that we do have an app called My Church if you haven't already downloaded it, it's an app where you can give your tithes. It's an app where you can get your statements. It's an app where you can get a calendar on there. This app is so great because you can listen to Pastor Manuel's, all his music. There's rancheras on there that he made. I don't know if you've ever heard that CD, but they're good if you like Mexican music. And there's all kinds of things. All you got to do is actually just uh, text on there, 77977. And then you're going to put on there exactly on there, Grace Church, all in caps. When you do that, an app goes into your phone. And then just follow the directions. You're going to put on your name and everything. And then all of a sudden, you're going to see all your information just go on there. And, and you'll get to see everything that's taking place at the church. The cool thing about it is, is if you go to the cafe and you want to purchase something, all you got to do is go to your app, choose, uh, select, you know, either times. You're going to select the different areas. You can select cafe and purchase whatever you want to purchase there at the cafe as well. So we're updating, and we've had this app, but a lot of people don't know about it. So I'm letting you know, okay? Amen. So, everybody already signed up? All right, all right. Don't get 
part of me. All right? God loves a cheerful giver, so it's time to get cheerful. Amen. Amen. So if anyone that needs an envelope, raise your hands. Yes, I'll hand you an envelope. Amen. It's good to see, you know, remember back in the day, everybody gave by check, by, you know, cash. or and, and now we know a lot of give online and stuff, so that's awesome. There's just so many ways for you to be able to give. Amen. And it's a good thing to give. Amen. Because God, God just keeps blessing you and blessing you and blessing you and blessing you. You cannot outgive God. Amen. So if you have your envelope, praise it up. Let's pray over it. If you, even if you did it online, pray over it. Pray over it, anything you've given. Amen. So let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Father, for your goodness, your mercy, your love, Lord God. We thank you for your faithfulness, Lord God. You're so faithful to us, Lord. Father, as each and every family here gives, Lord, I know, Lord, that you are blessing them, meeting their needs, Father God, that there should be no lack in your home, Lord God. And, Father, we thank you that the church's need are met, Father, so that the gospel will always be brought in this place. So we thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. And we all said amen. Amen, amen. God bless you as you give. Amen. amen. Sorry. Um, youth, you are dismissed. Amen. So youth, you just go out these doors and they're going to be out here in the youth building. Youth, dismissed. All right. Oh, Pastor John, can you take Thank you. All right. How's everybody doing? Hey. Now I know who the faithful ones that come, can't come after Resurrection Sunday. Because usually there's a letdown after Resurrection Sunday. I, I came for my yearly service. So here's the faithful ones that showed up the next Sunday right here. Glory to God. All right, I can tell now. <laughs> right? <laughs> Too many Easter eggs. Anyway, but it's good to see everybody and excited to be here. I have a couple a good message to share, an encouraging, just a single message I'm going to share with you this morning. Um, but we had, a, we had a fun time last week. Did we? I, I don't know about you, but I had fun. Are we switched over, Eric? Were we switched over? Amen. Those of you watching online, thank you for watching and being with us. But we had such a good time. We, we had hot dogs and just the popcorn. Man, I opened that door, the popcorn hit me, and, and I had to get a bag of popcorn. It was really good. Not the cotton candy. But anyway, we had a, such a good time. So thank you guys for, for participating and coming out and being with us. Amen. Now listen, I was sharing this with the first service. Very interesting. Tomorrow is the, you know, it was supposed to be the eclipse and, and so forth. And, and uh, uh, again, we, we've seen things that are going on and changing and, 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 and so forth. Again, again, people will say, well, it's, it's just a coincidence that the first eclipse in 2017, it was just all the, the, the cities that it went through, the seven Salems uh, for a time of peace in Jerusalem and whatever. And then now the eclipse is going over seven Ninevehs. And so forth. And, and why is that? Is that a coincidence or what? Why, why is it going over seven Ninevehs? Ninevehs, remember, was told to repent. And I don't know if you know that, but when the eclipse happened, people don't know this, but if, scientifically they found out that the eclipse during the time of, 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 of Jonah, the, in other words, an eclipse happened and then Jonah shows up and says <laughs> the eclipse that happened during the time. So, so when the people, when, the, when, the, when Jesus said, I'm going to give you the sign of Jonah, I don't believe he was just referring to being in the whale. There was a sign in Jonah was what? There was an eclipse that happened. The Jews knew that. And, and, and so can you imagine? Eclipse happened. Darkness fell in the city. And, and Jonah comes, appears and says, 40 days repent or the city's going to be destroyed. So they, re, they, they repented. And notice when Jesus hung on the cross, there was an eclipse. There was darkness from what? Uh, 12 to 3 o'clock. For three hours, there was darkness in the land and so forth. So again, there's a, a sign, again, there is a coincidence. See, people say, I don't, I'm not trying to read too much in it, but the issue is God does use what? Signs for the purpose of what? For, to, to let us know what's up ahead. See, the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians, and, and, and it talks about that when the Lord comes, he will come as a thief in the night. But listen, but it says, but you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this coming will not, in other words, take you by surprise. 
because you're children of the light. In other words, we that know should know the season of his coming. We, we should not be shocked that he's already coming. It's the person that doesn't know Jesus. You guys, but you are not in the darkness. You're in the light. And so you know, you know the time. In other words, you know the season that we're in. So you see what I'm saying? So a lot of people, we're not, we're, we shouldn't be in darkness. We're, you don't know the day or the hour, but we're in the season. Amen. We're in the season. And, and the, God put the, the sun, the moon, the stars. First thing it says is for signs. It's the first thing it says in Genesis 1.14. For signs, days, months, years. And, 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 and you know what, you know what the uh, horoscope did? They stole, they stole the stars and used it for their demonic purposes. Because there's a story even in the heavens. The gospel is presented in the stars. You got the Vir Virgo. That's the first. You got the Leo. Hello, Lion of Judah. So even the, the story, God put the story of the gospel in the stars even. But, but the horoscope people took it over and made it demonic. There's a true, you know, see what I'm saying? People don't understand. Everything God made, it was for his glory. Everything paints a picture of Jesus and what Jesus would do. But the devil stole it just like he stole music and everything else and uses it for his purposes. So I'm not talking about horoscopes and all that or whatever. No. I mean, you see where the Virgo with the woman with the child. And what's that that's, represents the Virgin Mary being born. And then the, Jesus comes as what? The Lion of Judah. It's all in there. He's, the, he's a suffering servant. You'll see it in all the things. See? And people, again, it was stolen by the enemy. And, the, and so, so this is, we're talking, when we talk about astronomy, it's all for God. God put the stars, everything, for signs, number one seasons and, and you know days years and so forth so it's a it i'm telling you man god knows what he's doing he's smarter than you can think i'm telling you and so you know are there things some things that are going to happen i believe there are some things that are going to happen right now it's like a uh, like a matchbox in the middle east right now i don't know if you heard israel last week attacked an annex ambassador uh complex in damascus people in Damascus and killed the general that was in charge of the Hamas attack on October 8th and killed some other leaders. So right now, it just takes one idiot and something can just explode in the Middle East. So we're, we're living in those times, amen? I do believe there's going to be an, an increase of earthquakes and some things. And so I suggest, like I told the people in the first uh, service, don't get rid of your books, don't get rid of your Bibles, don't get rid of your CDs, don't get rid of, of things that don't need, in other words, you don't need the internet to use. Because days are coming, amen, if, if the Lord tarries before the rapture, days are coming that, that you, this will mean a lot. And CDs and DVDs that you can put in there will mean a lot. Why? Because days are coming, I, I know what others are talking about, it. even us, what we're doing live stream on YouTube, they will, they will remove all Christian content from it. It will be it will be removed. Any Christian content, whatever, will end up being removed in the future. And then, and then think about it, people. We're living in the days where they say by 2030, we're getting that close where AI, artificial intelligence, is going to merge with the physical and become one. Do you see why God has to come soon? Because just like in the days of Noah, uh, the angels had relations with women and you had the giants that came and so forth. Well, guess what? In the same way, right before Jesus comes, the enemy has a plan why he knows his time. You know when, you, you know when UFOs started appearing? When did UFOs started appearing? When did you start hearing talk of UFOs? 19, not early, uh -uh, 1948 is when the first UFOs started. Well, 19, what happened in 1948? Israel became a nation. The devil knows his time is short, so now he's coming with a different deception than the giants. Now he's... UFOs, aliens. So when the rapture happens, then people will say, E.T. came and took me away. <laughs> They're gonna, one of the ex explanations is that these people were taken away. They, they weren't flowing with the new world order that's coming on the earth. You, you stayed, so you're a good part. You're going to become part of this new world order. The Christians, they're gone. This is what demonic devils are telling people who are demonically possessed. Uh, witches and other, that's what they're talking. That they're coming, these people, are, they're good people, but they're going to be taken away, kind of, because they're not, you know, they're not like you. You're in the new world order. We have something better for you. They're going to be okay. They even say that they're going to be in a good place. Yeah, we're going to be in heaven. 
That's what, that's what, uh, what is being talked to people that are demonically possessed and stuff. That's the, what's the talk that's going. So they're preparing them so when the rapture happens, it'll be an, one of the explanations that aliens came and took us away when did all this movie start? Star Trek, all the 50s, 60s, 70s, 80s? Again, people, it's all set up. I said all this to give you a little, wake me up. Now I'm going to give you a nice little message. Amen? Because Jesus is coming soon, though. So don't be surprised when things start happening. Yes, the, the, the eclipse happens tomorrow. Those that get to see a total eclipse, that's very rare. They're going to see it and so forth and so on. Not here. We won't get to see it because it's not in our path. But it is for a sign. I do believe it's for a sign. Isn't it funny that it's crossing a town named Rapture and the crisscross part is where e old Egypt and Cairo is, towns that are named that way? There's no coincidence, people. It's not a coincidence. It, it's a warning for people. He's giving people time to repent because Jesus is coming soon. So get ready. Amen? All right. You ready for the nice, nice little message? Now that, I, now that I stirred you up a little bit, just be ready. If there's ever a time to be in church, it's now. Come on. Amen? Not just one time, one time on Easter and that's it. Come on. Well, listen. Man, God is so good. I want to talk to you today because, you know, when we went to Grace Life University, we had a book that I read. It was called The Search for Significance. It's a powerful book. Um, and the book really talks about really how people's desire and heart is to be wanted, number one, to be known, and to be loved. Everybody, I don't care who you are, where you're at, everybody's desire is to be wanted. I want you to want me. Remember that song? To be known, to know, know, know you, and to be loved. Amen? To be loved. That's, that, that's really a basic basic need of the human heart to be wanted to be known and to be loved so and somebody had brought that up again i heard it and i said you know what i'm going to do a message on that of, of, of something that's needed and so i believe god's going to minister to you and so you'll be happy you came to you that, that you came this morning to hear that i believe it's one of the deepest needs everybody wants to be wanted amen nobody nobody likes rejection nobody wants to be you know feel like they're they're not wanted Amen? So, I do believe deep down inside, everyone wants to be wanted, known, and loved. Well, I have good news for you. God wants you. God knows you. And God loves you. So this is what we're going to talk about today, alright? So here's my first point. Those of you that have the notes, because we did make some notes, those of you that have it, uh, the first thing, let's talk about that. God wants you. See, if, if God didn't want you, we wouldn't be here today. Come on, right? Look at John 17, 24. Here is the night before Jesus dies on the cross. And he's praying for, for the disciples, right? And notice what he says here in John 17, 24. Father, I desire that they also whom you gave me may be with me where I am. Notice, Jesus, I want my disciples to be with me where I am. Why? That they may behold my glory, which you have given me, for you loved me before the foundation of the world. So right here, Jesus is saying, Father, I, I, want, I want my people, I want the people you've given me to be with me where I am. Jesus wants you to be with him. He does want you, amen, to be with him. You can see it in the scripture real plainly. He wants you. If he didn't want you, he wouldn't die for you. He wouldn't have gone to the cross for you. And then in John 14, 1 through 3, you know this. this to me, this is a really a, a picture of the rapture, but not defined, but but it's really a picture of the rapture. Jesus, in other words, Jesus is thinking about the rapture when he says this. Notice what he says. Let not your what? Let not your heart be troubled. See, even though I was talking about end times right now a little bit, some of you are like, ooh. What does Jesus say? Don't let your heart be troubled. You should be excited because Jesus is coming for you. Let, don't let your heart be troubled. You believe in God? Believe also in me. In my Father's house are what? Many mansions. Come on now. In, the, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. See, this is a reference to the rapture. And that's why people that say that, that, uh, uh, that the rapture happens in the middle or at the end, no, you ca cannot. Why? Because 
Jewish weddings last seven days. It's a type and picture of us being with Jesus for seven years up in heaven. We're going to be at the marriage supper of the Lamb. We're going to be up there, what? To receive our rewards and, and attend the... You, you, you've done weddings before? Let me tell you, that's going to be one big marriage supper of the Lamb. Talk about a spread and everything. We're going to be there for seven years to have the marriage supper of the Lamb and to receive our rewards. And then we come back riding in white horses with Jesus at the end of the tribulation so Jesus will take over as King of kings and Lord of lords. So anybody that says that you're going to go through the middle or and all that, you're not interpreting Scripture correctly. There's too many Scriptures that show, no, and this is one of them. I go to prepare a place for you. I'm going to come and to receive you to myself. It doesn't say I'm going to leave you there so you can learn some, 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 you know, a lesson through all the wrath and everything that God's going to pour out on the earth. Then why did Jesus die on the cross then? If I have to still bear God's wrath, why did Jesus die on the cross? No, no, let's get the record straight. He's coming. Types and shadows. Those are all pictures of Jesus. It's going to be a seven-day or seven-year wedding event for us when we get raptured. Amen. 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 Is it, is it on 73 or 72? Yeah, I think it's cold. So guys, uh, ushers, check it. Then make sure it's at least 73, not 72. They might have, might have upped it up, up here in the, in the stage too. You can check it. Um, so are you seeing that though? Jesus Jesus wants you to be with him where he is. Now, look at 2 Peter 3, 9. 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some count slackness, but is long-suffering toward us, not willing that any should perish, but that all should, all should come to repentance. Now notice, see, Jesus has not... Let me double-check, make sure this one isn't at 72. Uh, no, 73. Jesus, Jesus saying, I'm coming, but I'm delaying my coming. He's saying, he, God is delaying his coming. Why? Because he wants you to be with him. In fact, let's look at a couple of translations. Look at this. CV. The Lord isn't slow about keeping his promises, as some people think he is. In fact, God is what? Patient. Because he wants everyone to turn from sin and no one to be lost. Amen? CV. The Lord isn't... Oh, next one. Or did you, what happened? Where are you, did you do the message? Oh, message. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, message is fine. Don't overlook the obvious here, friends. With God, one day as good as a thousand years and a thousand years in one day. God isn't late with his promise as some measure of lateness. He is restraining himself on account of you. If you're not saved in here, it's your fault we haven't gone yet. <laughs> Anybody not saved in here? If you're watching, get saved, man. You're holding back the return of the Lord. It's an account of you, he says, holding back the end. See, you don't realize how much power you have. God is waiting for you to get saved. The Bible, Paul says in Romans, until the fullness of the Gentiles come in, then things change. The rapture happens, and then God starts dealing with the Jews again. We go back to kind of the Old Testament times. People, the reason why, and the other reason I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture, you know why? Because if, remember, the Daniel prophecy that, that there will be 470 you know, years before the Lord will return and whatever. So guess what? Only 463 have been fulfilled. Where's the other seven? God's going to deal with the Jewish people for those seven years to fulfill that prophecy. And then he comes. So it's almost like God goes back to Old Testament times to deal with the Jewish people for seven years to prepare them to receive the Messiah. Why? They're going to build a temple. They're going to have sacrifices. It's almost like we're gone. The age of grace has run out. And God, for a period of time, goes back to Old Testament times. And notice, did you notice that God's wrath is poured out during the tribulation? Why can he do that if Jesus bore our wrath? Because the age of grace ran out. We're out of here. Because if God were to pour his wrath when we're here, then that goes against his covenant when he already died for our... To, to, we're not appointed to wrath, the Bible says. That means, that means double jeopardy on us when Jesus had already paid the price. So he has to get us out and it goes back to Old Testament style and now God can now judge like he did in the Old Testament and bring judgments on the earth because we're out of here. Ooh, I'm telling you, you get that revelation right there, you understand why I believe in the pre-tribulation rapture of the church. It goes back to the justice of God. He will not pour wrath on those that he has saved. Can I prove it to you? What happened in Sodom and Gomorrah? Angel says, we can't do nothing, Lot, until you get out of here. 
God would not judge Sodom and Gomorrah until what? Lot and his family was removed. See, Abraham is the type of the, of the Christian in grace that's walking in the grace of God and living a holy life. Lot is a type of Christian that's saved but worldly. He was hanging out in Sodom and Gomorrah, in, you know, in Las Vegas. He was hanging out in Las Vegas. Sorry, Las Vegas people. Anyway. He was starting, and started, you know what I'm saying? He, liked, he pitched his tent towards, towards Sodom and Gomorrah. Yet notice, even though he was living in a worldly place and might have been done, God had to remove him before judgment would come. I'm that's why I believe so much that we have to be removed before things get bad. So the rapture's close. We're getting closer. One day closer, every day is closer to the rapture. Amen? And then did we put TPT on that one? On, on, on 2 Peter 3, 9? That means contrary to man's perspective, the Lord is not late with his promise to return as some measure of lateness, but rather his delay simply reveals his loving patience toward you, sinner, whoever you are that you haven't got saved yet, because he does not want any to perish, but all to come to repentance. See, God wants you. If you're watching, you haven't been saved, God wants you. Amen? Not for the army. Well, the army of the Lord, but He does want you. Amen? So we've established that. Now let's look at this one. Not only though do people want to be wanted, people want to be known. known. Amen? Because to know, know you is to love, love, love you. And I do, yes I do. And I do, yes I do. <laughs> Psalms, I mean, Isaiah 29, 15. So, it, you know, people's desire is to be wanted, but how many know you want to be known? You want to be understood. Come on. Understood and known. And, and I think this is very important in marriages, too, and something that I'm learning, is spouses, this is an area that we need to work on. A lot of times we're talking to each other and everything, but we're not really listening. Instead, we're listening to give an answer to correct something. Instead of just, just shut up and listen. Just pay attention to what they're saying. Do you understand what they're saying and how they feel? So, people want to be known and understood. And if they're known and understood, they feel loved. Amen? So notice Isaiah 29, 15, but notice, Woe to those who seek deep to hide their counsel far from the Lord, and their works are in the dark. They say, ha, who sees us? Or who knows us? See, see, people in the world, they think, God doesn't know what I'm doing. Some people do things in the dark, and they think, oh, God can't see it. Listen, people, we're going to read from the Word in a little bit. He sees the night and dark are alike to him. You can't hide in the dark. Amen? You can't hide under those covers and eat those Oreo cookies without God not knowing. He knows. He knows. <laughs> Amen? Psalms 1.6. The Lord knows what? The way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So notice, God knows your way. You're right there in your notes where if you have a right, I left space for you to write things. He knows your way. And then Psalms 44, 21. Would not God search this out? For he knows the secrets of the heart. Listen, you cannot hide anything from God. He knows every one of your secrets. So why not talk to him about it? Well, I'm ashamed to talk to him. Well, he already knows it. He already knows it. The thing you're ashamed about, he already knows about it. And he wants you to talk to him about it. Why? So you can get an answer. He can help you. Sometimes just getting it out will get rid of the shame. Amen? Right? I'm a joker. I'm a smoker. I'm a midnight toker. Just fess it up to God. Just confess it. Just, Lord, I need help. Come on. Amen? Let's go to Psalm 139. Now, this one is powerful. We're going we're gonna to dig in a little bit here in Psalms 139. We're talking about God wants you, but He knows you. And this psalm, oh my goodness, if this doesn't, if this doesn't put adrenaline in your heart and your soul, nothing else will. Notice what the psalmist says here in Psalm 139. Oh Lord, you have searched me. Notice, God searches you, and He what? And known me. God knows you. If anybody knows you, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit know you. You've searched me, and you know me. Come on. So you can write that down in your notes. He knows you. Uh, what else? 
You know my sitting down and my rising up. Amen. Those of you that just do one sit up and one sit back down, he knows when you sit up in the morning and he knows when you sit. That's your exercise for the day. I sit up in the morning. I sit up when I lie down. God knows it. <laughs> Amen. He knows you're sitting down. He knows you're rising up. Amen. I don't know about you, but I don't know my spouse is every rising or, you know what I'm saying? Do, are you always watching your spouse? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to know what they're doing. God does. You, notice the next one. You understand my thought afar off. That says verse 2b. It says, you understand my thought afar off. So notice, he knows your thoughts. God knows what you're thinking. He knows your thoughts. Come on now. Yet, guess what? He knows your thoughts. He still, he still what? He still loves you. He still accepts you. He knows, he knows the secrets of your heart. He knows your, your, your thoughts. Let's go to verse 3. You comprehend my path and my lying down. So notice, he understands the path you're taking. And again, when you're, you sat down, but now you're lying down. <laughs> so he sees you lying down. You comprehend my path and my lying down. Notice the next one. And you're acquainted with all my ways. God knows everything about you. So I like to put it this way. He knows all your ways. And he knows, he, he knows, uh, um, yeah, he knows all your ways. And notice the next one, verse 4. For there is not a word on my tongue, but behold, O Lord, you know it all together. Even before you speak something, God already knows what you're going to say. Even before you say something, before you speak something, God already knows what you're going to say. Isn't that amazing? He knows it all. Amen? I think there's a song that came out of Christian. He knows, you know. Amen? He knows what you're going through. Notice, you have hedged me behind and before me. Well, Brother Lalo just, just sang that. Christ be for me. Hello? Duh, they sang a scriptural song. <laughs> he has hedged, you, know, you have a hedged me before, before me, I mean, be, be, hedged me behind and before and laid your hand upon me. Listen, God has his hand upon you. He has protection in front of you. He has protection behind you. And we even, he even sang that other song uh, uh, about, uh, you know, I need you, I need you. Did you know that God sustains your very breath? That Belshazzar, when Daniel, in the book of Daniel, when he had taken the gold goblets from, Jeru from, the, from the temple and, and, and he was drinking from them and everything, God said, that's it. It's over for you, buddy. Why? Because you did not acknowledge that God is the one that sustains your very breath. Did you know that God sustains your very breath? The fact that you can take a next breath, if God would re remove his hand up from you and, and you stop breathing, that's it. You would go. You would go. It, 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 he, he sustains the, every breath that you take. That's how much you need him and we need him. Oh, pastor, I'm a self-made man. Amen. I have it all together. Amen. No. He's our very breath. He's sustaining you. He's behind you. He's in front of you. He's next to you. He's, his, uh, his hand is upon your life. Amen. And if you were to remove that, sayonara, ya te vas. You're going. Amen. Let's keep reading. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high. I cannot even attain it. It's, it's like, man, this, this knowledge is way... In other, in other words, he knows you like no one else does. You can write that down. He knows you like no one else does. Verse 6. He knows you like no one else does. Amen. Now let's keep reading though. Where can I go from your spirit? Or where can I flee from your presence? See, it doesn't matter where you go. He's there. Did you know that the Bible says even people when, when they get thrown in hell, the angels are right there. It says the, in hell in, in front of the angels. God's everywhere. I've been everywhere, man. I've been everywhere. He's everywhere. If I ascend into heaven, you are there. Notice, if I make my bed in hell, behold, you're there. That's a terrible thing about people that are going to be in hell, because why? They're going to be in pain and whatever, but yet see that God's presence there. But it's not with them. 
but they can see it. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the uttermost parts of the sea, if I go to a Hawaiian island or a, Kauai or a deserted island somewhere, I just want to get away, Pastor. He's there. You can't run from God. You can't go to another state and run from God. You can't go to another country and run from God. He's there. The same God that's speaking to your heart where you're here. Maybe if I go over here, then God will leave me alone. No, he will be there too. And he's going to speak to your heart the same way. Hallelujah. Even there, listen, your hand shall what? Lead me. And your right hand shall what? Even there, guess what? He's going to be leading you. He's going to be holding. Come on, daughter, son. Take my hand. I'm, I'm guiding you. I'll show you where to go. Right? If I say, surely the darkness shall fall on me. Some people say, oh, I'm, I'm going to do it in the dark. No one can tell. The person in the city, I, no, no one's going to know. No, no. Surely the darkness shall fall on me. Even the night shall be what? Light about me. See, to God, even nighttime is like daytime. You can't hide. You can't run. You can't hide. He's everywhere. You can't hide from Him. You can't go to the mountain and get away and get away from people and, and whatever. You can't. He's there. Come on. The darkness and the light are both alike to you, He says. So to God, darkness and light doesn't make no difference. He, he can see it all. Amen? That's why I told you, you can't hide those cookies. But now, now notice though, here's when it starts getting really good. And this is why we don't believe in abortion, in babies being killed before their birth. For, my in, for you form my inward parts. And now listen, and if you did do that, thank God for His grace and mercy. Yes, and you will see your baby again. Yes. Amen? If you did that. God's grace and mercy is greater than what you did. And you can, and you can receive forgiveness for that. Amen. For, and you need to forgive yourself. Because why? Jesus paid for it. Amen. For you form my inward parts. You covered me in my mother's womb. I will praise you, for I am what? Fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. My frame was not hidden from you. When I was made in secret. See, when you were in mom's womb, God was framing your bones and putting them all together. And, and I was skillfully wrought in the lowest parts of the earth. Uh-oh. Oh, oh. whatever. In the lowest parts of the earth. Okay, I'm still on. Now, here, here it is. Check this out. Your eyes saw my substance. Well, pastor, I was just a little glob. I was just a little blob in my mom. Well, call it whatever you want. God saw your substance being yet even before you were formed. Amen? He knew everything it was going to take. And in your book, they all were written, the days fashioned for me, when as yet there was none of them. Now this one blows me away. I want to dig in a little bit into this one. I'm going to look at a couple of translations of verse 16. Notice, God had you in mind and he had every day of your life laid out. In fact, he has a book where he's laid out every day of your life. Look at NLT. You saw me before I was born. Every day of my life was recorded in your book. Every moment, was, every moment of your life was laid out before a single day had passed. That's amazing. That is amazing, people. Oh, you don't believe in... No, no, no. This, what does the Bible say? The Word, he says, God has a book and every part of your life. Now you understand why Jesus, I believe Jesus would pray in the morning and he would seek the Father's will of what he was going to do that day. So in other words, God has a plan and a purpose for every single day of your life. Oh, pastor, it's just Monday, Monday, la, la, la. Rainy, remember that one? Rainy days and Mondays always get me down. Because it's the first day of the week and I got to work five days. 
No! God had a plan for your rainy day Mondays. God had a plan for every single day. And if you understand, no wonder, notice, no, 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 notice. I believe Jesus in the morning before he went and, and went to the other side of the lake and cast the, that legion out of that demoniac, I believe that morning God gave him instructions. You need to go to the other side of the lake. Why? There's someone over there that needs deliverance. So Jesus tells the disciples, hey, you got to go to the other side. No wonder Jesus was asleep on the pillow. Why? He already got instruction for that day. He knows he's going to get to the other side, even though the storm. You might be going through a storm, and it's rough waters, but you know somehow, some way, you're going to make it to the other side. Because why? God already showed you. God already planned your day, and he saw you victorious on the other side of the lake. Oh, glory to God. So you should wake up in the morning. That's why every morning I do, I pray when I do my prayers and everything. Father, have your way in my life today. Not my will, but your will be done. Let your wisdom, your grace, your power, your anointing, your creative ideas flow through me today for every decision I need to make and for every moment of my life. What am I doing? I'm giving him permission to flow, to fulfill what he already had written in the book that I was going to do that day. That means that he must already have provision for me for whatever he wants me to do. Woo, this is so good. Woo, glory to God. Amen? So no matter what you're going through right now, you might think, I know I'm going through a, 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 a dark time. You could say, I'm going through a storm myself. But guess what? God's already made provision. I said, God's already made provision. I said, God's already made provision. I'm going to the other side. Amen? I'm go you too. Amen? Those of us that are going through storms or whatever, you if you're going to see the other side, it there's going to be a light at the end of that tunnel. Amen? Light is going to dawn. I said, light is going to dawn. Well, Pastor, yeah, but I lost my loved one and they left early, whatever. But you don't know. You don't know the whole story. You don't know why in the book it possibly was written that he was leaving at that time or she was leaving at that time. Sometimes there's people that have been trying to get set free from drugs and, and, and God knows they can't handle it anymore. They can't take it anymore. And he might just allow them to go ahead and go home. One time Brother Hagin talked about this. When he pastored, he said, see people, this messes up with our theology a little bit because they think everything's going to go perfectly. But God knows what's in people's heart. And sometimes he lets them go home because they want to. And so Brother Hagin was laying hands on a gentleman that he was praying for. He was an older gentleman. He was praying for, and he laid hands on him. And he said something like, grab my hands and move it out. He was like, what? Because, you know, he, I believe healing. God wants everybody healed. And he put his hands on him to pray for him, to, for his healing. And boom, like somebody took his hand and moved it. And he says, and Lord, what's going on? And the Lord spoke to him. This brother, because all his Christian life, he was one of those he just wasn't living, you know what I'm saying? He was saved, he knew he believed in God, but he was just failing the way he was walking, like, you know, and everything. And, and the Lord told him for the last two weeks, he's actually been doing really good. He's got everything in order. His house is in order and everything. Just let him come home and I'll take care of him. So Brother Hagin said, okay. And sure enough, he did. And went home to be with the Lord. Amen? And some of you, well, yeah, but I, they were young. And you, you don't know. I, I'm, I'm glad my mom's not here to see what's coming in these end times. To be honest with you, I'm glad she's not here. And there's others that have left, and you don't know, maybe they wouldn't be able to handle what's coming. So God takes them away before they fall, or something was going to happen to them that maybe they saw, I got to take them now, or... See what, I'm, see what I'm saying, people? We don't understand everything yet. Even the knowledge we have right now, it's, Paul says it's, a, it's like we're looking through a foggy mirror. We're, we're seeing dimly. We don't see everything clearly now. But one day we will. So even, like I said, if God says every day was prepared to me, then God knows the day I'm going to leave. I'm believing for the rapture now, but if he's going before, that's up to him. Amen? I do know when I first got saved that I would see the end times. I knew, do know God showed me we would be living in the end times. I do know when we started the church, God showed me that this would be an end time church. So God is, why? The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. The Holy Spirit will show you things to come. 
I've shared this. I don't know if I shared it before, but I only share it. It was your mom's time. You might not believe it, but it was. Because it came to me one day, and I saw her, and I saw that I saw her differently. So we don't understand all these things. But I'm telling you, God has laid out. Did I share the other one? I did them all? The message? Which one? TPT. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. <laughs> before I'd ever seen the light of day, the number of days what you planned for me were already recorded. Well, guess what? If the days for your life are already recorded in the book, then what do you, what's your job? Find out what it is. Seek God every day. Find out where He wants you to go, where He wants you to be, and fulfill what God has called you to do. If you don't, you're going to be a miserable Christian. Notice the next one, uh, TP, uh, message. Oh yes, you shaped me first inside, then out. You formed me in my mother's womb. I thank you, hi God. You're breathtaking, body and soul. I am marvelously made. I worship in adoration. What a creation. You know me inside and out. You know every bone in my body. You know exactly how I was made bit by bit. How I was sculpted from nothing into something. Like an open book, you watched me grow from conception to birth. All the stages of my life were spread out before you. The days of my life all prepared before I'd even lived one day. You know what that means? That means that, you know, like I said, if you're in a tough time or whatever, you know what that means? That means whatever God has for you this next coming week, in this coming week, next day, God already had something planned. So you need, you, that means the grace, the provision, whatever it is that you need the following week. I need rent money. Well, guess what? God had already provided. He's already made provision for you. And he will supply all your need according to his riches and glory. Glory to God. That means, praise God, you're not alone. You're wanted. You're being taken care of. Glory to God. He's going to be there. You just step into. God, what, what is it that you want me to do today? Father God, where is it? Just be expecting something's going to happen. Amen. I'm going to lead somebody to the Lord today. Something's going to happen. Amen. Something is going to happen. Just be open. Be expectant for what that is. Every day was recorded. That's powerful. Every day was recorded. Now, it doesn't end there. Let's finish this psalm here. Oh, man, i got to get moving. Notice, how precious also are your thoughts to me, O oh God. So God's thinking about you. Again, that's always on my mind. Like Georgia. Amen? How great is the sum of them? If I should count them, the thoughts that God thinks about you, they would be more in number than the sand. When I awake, I am still with you. Oh my, look at this. Look at this NLT and then TBT. How precious are your thoughts about me, God? They can't even be numbered. Listen, God thinks about you so much. Now, I love my grandkids and my, whatever, but I'm not thinking about them all the time. You're not, Pastor? I, I got to think about it. But here it says that God thinks about you all the time. In fact, it, it, listen, I can't even count them. They outnumber the grains of sand. That's a lot. How many beaches in the uh, grains of sand? Listen. And when I'm awake, you're still with me. Look at the TPT. Look at this. Every single moment, oh, God is thinking of you. Every single moment, you are thinking of me. I don't know about you, man. I love my spouse. I love my kids, my grandkids. But not that much. I'm not like Willie Nelson. You're always on my mind. You are always on my mind. Precious and few are the moments. No. Every single moment you're thinking of me. How precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish. There you go. Cherish is the word I use to describe. See, all those songs were written for the Lord. They just don't know it. That I'm a poet. <laughs> how, how precious and wonderful to consider that you cherish me. Notice, God cherishes you constantly in your every thought. He's thinking, I mean, I'm, come on, people. I love my wife, I love my kids and grandkids, but not that much that I'm thinking about them 100% of the time. 
God is thinking you of you all the time. All the time. Now, is that love or is that not love? What's love got to do with it? Everything. <laughs> oh, God, your desires toward me are more than the grains of sand on every shore. Is that it? When I wake each morning, you're still with me. Did you wake up this morning? Did God leave you? He never leaves you. He'll never reject you. He'll never divorce you. He'll never let go. That's how much he loves you. That's how much, that's how much he knows you. I ain't even got to the love part. But right there shows you that he's loving you. And that's my last point. And Nahum talks about God knows those who trust in him. But let's go to our last point real quick. 1 John 4, 16, NLT. So we talked about God wants you. I want you to want me. God what knows you? To know, know, know you is to love you. And God loves you. First John, notice. We know how much God loves us. And we have put our what? Trust. See, a lot of people know that God loves them, but do you believe it? Do you really believe that God loves you this much that he's thinking of you all the time? Notice. We know how much God loves us, but we put our, there's the key right there. When it starts affecting your life is when you believe it, when you begin trusting in his love for you. But we have put our trust in his love. Why? Because God is love. People, God is not wrath. God is love. Amen? So contrary to that popular song, what, what's love got to do with it, got to do with it? Everything. It's all about his love. It's love that sent God so loved the world that he gave. Right? And notice, God is love, and all who live in love live in God, and God lives in them. In other words, you get so filled with love that it overflows in your life. And that's what he wants. Look at John 17 real quick. And, and, and verse 20, 23, because of time. Well, let me read it real quick. I'll read it real quick. Jesus is, it, it, now notice, this is the night before he dies. And Jesus begins talking new covenant talk. He's talking about new covenant talk here. Why? He knows this is about to be enforced after my death, burial, and resurrection. So notice how he starts talking to the disciples. I don't pray for these alone. Oh, but, but also listen, for those who will what? Believe in me through their word. Listen, Jesus is praying for you and me. That's you and me. And this is how he's praying for us. That they may all may be what? One, as you, Father, are in me. <coughs> notice, <coughs> I in you. What is he talking about? That's identity. Knowing who you are in Christ. That's, that's new to covenant teaching. Finding out who you are in Christ. I'm a new creation in Christ. I'm righteous in Christ. I'm delivered in Christ. That's identity, right? And notice that they also may be one in us. Notice, when you, when you find that who you are in Christ, that's when you'll begin to be united and grow. That the world may believe that you sent me. Look at verse 22. And the glory which you gave me, I give them, that they may be one just as we are one. I in them, here, here's, that, here's that new covenant talk, identity. I in them, you in me. Are you seeing that? <coughs> that they may be made perfect in one. <coughs> Can you give me some water? Now notice, perfect here can also refer to maturity. You know when you begin to grow? When you know who you are in Christ. Listen. So that they may know that you've sent me, and listen, here it is, and have loved them as you have loved me. I don't know about you, but what? Jesus said, Father God, I want them to know that you love them, that's you and me, as much as you love me, Jesus said. Father God loves you as much as he loves Jesus. Now how many believe... How many believe that God the Father loves Jesus, His Son? How many believe that? Right? Can you believe that He loves you as much as He loves Jesus? I know. Come on now. If you be honest with yourself, some of you are like, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I got to I gotta think about it a little bit. Why? You know why? Because you see your mistakes. You see your failures, but you refuse to see that who you are in Christ. You refuse to see that you're seeing yourself in the flesh, not in the spirit. In the spirit, you, have, you are the righteousness of God in Christ. In the spirit, you're a new creation in Christ. God does not see you in the flesh anymore as a believer. He sees you in the spirit. So in the spirit, you are worthy. You are to... Come on. See what I'm saying? It's because we look at our flesh and we see our misgivings, our failures, 
And so we, oh man, can he love me really? Yeah, he loves you like that, that hot mess that you are. Amen? That stinky mess you are, guys. He loves you. Amen? Because he sees, he sees the spirit of Christ within you. Oh, glory to God. Listen. And I love me as you have loved. Not, not, not just for, because of time, can you put uh, the TPT on verse 23? And then we're going to go to verse 26. Listen, Jesus says, you live fully in me and I live fully in them so that they will experience perfect unity and the world will be convinced that you have sent me for they will see that you love each one of them. Jesus saying, with the same passionate love that you have for me. Wow. Jesus passionately, not just loves me, but passionately loves me. And then in verse 26, I have declared to them your name and I will declare it that the love with which you love me may be what? In them and I in them. Put that one in the TPD to end. I have revealed to them who you are, Father, and I will continue to make you even more real to them. Why? Why is, God, why is Jesus revealing the Father to us? God is love. And the more you get a revelation of his love for you, listen, so that you may experience that same endless love. Remember that song? Endless love? So you may experience that wedding endless love song that you, that you have for me. For your love will now live in them. Notice, ooh, his love now lives in us as I live in them. The more Again, what did Paul pray to the Ephesians? I pray that you would know the width, the length, the depth, the height of the love of Christ which passes understanding so that you may be filled with all the fullness of God who is what? Love. So that you may be filled with all the full. How, you want to be filled with all the fullness of God? Get a revelation of his love. I'm telling you people, no matter what you're going through, no matter if you've been rejected, no matter if you're going through a storm, no matter uh, the situation you're facing, God loves you, period. As much as he loves Jesus. Passionately and endlessly. So this morning, I'm going to open up the front. I want the prayer team to come up. You need prayer to receive. Now you see, that's why now you can receive healing, because he loves you, not because you deserve it. I mean, yes, you're worthy in the Lord, but it, he does it because he loves you. You can receive, and if you're, and I sense, you know, when I was praying about this service, I sense that there are people that just needed to sense God's presence, his love, and his, and his, and his goodness this morning. So if that's you, you just, there's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with sensing God's, God's love, and, and you, sometimes you just need to be enveloped in his love. And the psalmist says, my cup runs over. Surely his goodness, his grace, his love, his mercy is going to, what, follow me all the days of my life. So I want to open it up. If that's you, come on up and just, re just receive, amen? Just be open. Don't, 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 be the, don't be the shy boy and the shy girl. Amen? Amen? Don't be shy. Come and receive. Sometimes you just need that. You need somebody to stand with me. And, and a lot of times you'll see that you'll receive that healing or whatever else that you need as you focus on his love for you and so forth. So come on up. As they, as they begin to worship and sing, I want you to come on up. Come on, people. I know there's somebody here. People in the first service came up. You can do it too. Come on. You don't have to be shy. Just come on up and receive. Thank you, Father God. Father, we just love you. The rest of you, raise your hands and let's just worship the Lord and thank the Lord. But come on up if you need prayer. Don't, 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 don't let this opportunity. See, God will meet you when you take that step of faith. He'll meet you where you're at. So come and receive. Father, we just thank you, my Father. Go ahead if you have, you have a song or whatever you want to worship the Lord with. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, Father, we love you this morning, Father. Those of you that are watching right there where you're at, just begin to lift up your hands and let them just refresh you and fill you and get a greater revelation of his love for you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Thank you, my Father God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Those of you that want to stand up for you can, let's worship the Lord. Receive from the Lord this morning. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is gone.
No matter what you're, where you're at, no matter what you're going through, even if you're failing terribly, His love for you never changes. And the day that you realize that He will never stop loving you, even where you're at, is the day that change will begin. Because you're accepted in the Beloved. You're accepted in your Beloved. He loves you where you're at, no matter how how much you've been failing, no matter how, how short, the day you realize that He loves you deeply and His love for you will never change is the day that your want to will change. And then when your want to changes, that's when you're going to see change begins to happen. Why? Because you want to. It's not forced. It's not religion. It's not because the law says, but because you want to. Because listen, no matter what's going on, you are doing what you want to. You are living the way you want to. So His love will change the want to in your life. Amen? His love will change the want to. How many believe God loves you? You should know it now from the Word of God. Woo! Listen, you know where true happiness is? In knowing that Father God loves you. I don't know about you, but as a kid, 
Listen, I appreciate the love of a mom. But as a kid, a kid always crying out for the love of his father. It's true. That's why there's so many messed up. Because they never received a love of the father. Father God loves you. Oh, he's a good dad. He's a good father. He loves you, man. Oh, he loves you. Listen, I want to give a shout out to Gil over here that was helped with the, with the uh, keyboard. It was, it was awesome for the Gil. <laughs> Getting new people helping out in the praise team. So, amen. Uh, is Gil the country guy, Gil? Yeah. <laughs> no. No, anyway, Gil, thank you, man. It was, it was awesome to have him, you know. I, th I thank God for Lalo. He's, he's you know, yeah. getting people and helping them, getting trained and everything to serve. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. yeah. I, I did worship for so many years, and, and I, needed, I needed to get off of that and let others do it. Amen? Yeah. Amen. So thank you, Lalo and the team. You guys are doing an awesome job and everything. Did you receive this morning? Yeah. Amen. God is so good. Now, again, you're happy, right? Because you know you're loved. Happiness only comes with God's love. Amen? God bless you guys. We'll see you.